from the data scientist's perspective, it's like, how can they do their job? Like it's science. It's, it's, it's a lot of hypothesis testing and throwing stuff away and evaluating things. If every experiment is very expensive, then, you know, you can't really do your job very well. And so where we find yeah. future stores being really valuable is making it possible for data scientists to kind of self-serve, build an experiment and deploy their own future pipelines and have us be kind of like this harness that gives them, um, you know, the versioning, the monitoring, the scale, the uptime, all the things that you would expect, incremental processing, stream processing, everything you would expect and maybe a, a really good data engineer could do. We make it possible for our data scientists to do themselves. And, and so the promise space is different. Now, the overlap is that, well, sometimes those features are embeddings. And so that's where the overlap is. Uh, I see. That's where they dance together. Because I think the confusion comes in when you hear folks talking about how they're using vector stores for their recommender systems. Yeah. And I, I think what it is, is um, I would describe it as everyone has a feature store. If you have a model in production that takes data as inputs, whatever process you take to get that data there and manage that data processing, that's your feature store. Now, that could be a bunch of bash scripts. It could be a Python package that you install in the dark container and just like do the processing on the fly. Like there's a lot of things that people do, but that whole kind of promise space I would define as a feature store. And um, a lot of what I'm doing when I'm talking to, to prospects is trying to understand if they have models of production, it's like you have something here. Help me understand like what that looks like today so I can show you what the kind of ROI would be. Yeah. 